Happiness for the soul in the external world, since these are perishable. True happiness lies in that which is eternal within us. These are the words of the ancient Egyptian masters. Hello, I'm Dr. Karen Clark Ashby, editor of Egyptian Yoga, the Philosophy of Enlightenment, and Egyptian Proverbs, 10 Chaz, my author and my husband, Dr. Reginald Muata Ashby. I am honored today to introduce you, Dr. Muata Ashby. Dr. Muwata is a lecturer, researcher, and practitioner of yoga philosophy. The first book written by Dr. Ashti is Tem Chaz, Egyptian Proverbs. This book contains hundreds of proverbs, teachings, and meditations from the pyramid text, coffin text, and wisdom text. It's an excellent source to use for one's daily meditation practice. His second book is Egyptian Yoga, the Philosophy of Enlightenment. This book is very comprehensive, detailing the meaning of the Egyptian mysteries of the temple in order for you to attain spiritual transformation leading to the highest goal of life, enlightenment. In this series on yoga, Muata discusses and demonstrates various Hatha yoga postures of the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Yoga exercise postures, or asanas as they are called in the Indian yoga tradition, are more than just physical exercises. They produce deep relaxation of the body and mind, and thus they are termed psychophysical exercises. Here Dr. Muwata focuses on the symbolism behind the postures as portrayed by ancient Egyptian deities. When the symbolism is properly understood, the practice of the postures goes beyond producing relaxation of the body to affect a meditative state of mind leading to a psycho-spiritual transformation of your entire personality. Also discussed are the process of yoga and how you can improve your life through yoga. What does it mean when the ancient texts proclaim that we are gods and goddesses and how can the practice of yoga make that come through in our lives? Is there a way to find true happiness beyond any human experience and a peace which is not affected by the ups and downs of daily human life? To discover our immortality, bliss and peace within each one of us this is the promise of yoga. Join us for this relaxing and enlightening video series which will change your life and lead you to realize this highest potential. Heads up.
Hello, this is Moata Ashby, and I want to thank you for joining us this morning for our yoga exercise practice. Now many of you have known of yoga as an exercise. If you have seen any of our other videos, our video lectures on the philosophy of yoga, you'll know that yoga is a major undertaking, it is a major philosophy, and the physical exercise is only one part of yoga as a whole. However, exercise is the basis of yoga because if you don't have a healthy body you can't delve into the deeper mysteries of the philosophy. So therefore this morning we're going to explore some of the deeper mysteries of the exercises based on Egyptian philosophy and the exercise of the netters or the exercise of the gods and goddesses. Now first of all you should have a proper mat to do exercise on. Also you should have loose clothing before you begin. Now first I'd like to discuss a little bit about Egyptian philosophy and the philosophy of exercise. Health is the daughter of exercise. This is an Egyptian proverb of course. But the exercise of the gods and goddesses begins much earlier than that and is rooted in the heart of Egyptian mythology. At first, there was only Nu, the primeval waters, and from Nu emerged Re, or the supreme being. When this happened, Re decided to create the universe out of the primeval waters, and out of these waters, came about Shu and Tefnut. From Shu and Tefnut, their daughter and son, Geb and Nut, came about. These represent the earth and the heavens. Now many of you know, will know, if you have heard our lectures, we have said that the netters, or the gods and goddesses, symbolize universal principles in nature. Now Geb symbolizes the earth, and Nud symbolizes the heavens. When Ray emerged and created these netters, they were at one time united, and then Ray decided to create, and therefore he said to Shu, his other son, go and get in between Nud and Geb. And thereabout the first act of creation came about. So, air, or Shu, who also represents ether or space, came in between the heavens and the earth, and thereabout came creation. Now, when Newt and Geb were together, Newt became pregnant. And her children were Isis, Osiris, Set, and Nephthys. Now, so the story goes that Osiris was the king of Egypt and Isis was his queen. Set, his brother, became jealous of him and killed him. But then Isis was able, through her magic, wisdom, power, to revive Osiris. Now these principles, or netters of creation, are going to be the major characters in the Egyptian mythology, as well as in the practice of yoga exercise. So let us begin. Peace be with you. Greetings. We are here today in Saqqara, Egypt. You can see behind me the wonderful step pyramid of Saqqara built by Enhotep, the great architect and sage of the earliest period of ancient Egyptian history. We are here today to practice a session 
and Sefnetru, the movement of the gods and goddesses. Please begin by laying down on your backs. the time before creation, the time when the divine self existed as spirit only. And before that time, there was no creation, there was no earth, no sky. And in that creation time, the divine self created a mound. And this mound is the pyramid coming out of nothingness. So the divine self can have a place to stand, a place to sit. As we enjoy our practice, we'll have moments of silence where the peacefulness of this time of the year Now we're going to utter some chants, invocatory chants to the divine, for our spiritual practice. Sitting in a comfortable posture, allowing your abdomen to expand as you breathe in, allowing your abdomen to contract in towards your spine as you breathe out. Rapata O Mamu Rapata O Mamu Rapata O Mamu Rapata The Divine Self uttered these special words to bring creation into being by sound and all material existence came into being. Now coming to a standing posture. hands together. This was the Nefertem posture that we just practiced. Sitting in the lotus, the lotus symbolizing the creation, bringing creation into being out of the primeval ocean. Sitting on the lotus, which is creation itself. Now coming to a squatting posture. This is the noon posture, hands together symbolizing the primeval ocean before creation came into existence. Pushing up, expanding the arms, means creation coming into being, duality. Coming up as you breathe in. Coming down, breathe out. Coming up, breathe in. Coming down, breathe out. Coming up, breathe in, and release. Now to the shoe posture. Stand the legs out three feet apart. Bending into a horse stance, hands at shoulder level. I'm going to push up as you breathe in. Visualize that you are extending, supporting the sky. You are like a pillar. Coming down, breathe out.
down. Very good. Release. Don't forget that for more of a workout, you can extend the repetitions or the time holding the posture. Now moving from side to side. Relax and warm up. Side to side. Front to back. Circular motion. Reverse. Now with the head. Front and back. Side to side. Circular motion. Opposite side. Now release. Now when you come to the front of your mats, you practice the journey of our posture. creation. We brought heaven and earth into being. Now we must sustain them. And we do that by the journey of Ra, which is on the divine boat. The journey of Ra, like a journey on an ocean, creates waves. All those waves are the vibrations which keep matter together. Matter in the forms of creation. With hands together, raising up, arching back. As you breathe in, coming down, head to knee. With your left leg back, knees touching the ground. Head up. Both feet back. Now, knees on the ground. We're going to scoop in motion to a cobra posture. Once again, up. Leg forward. Both legs forward. Arching back. and back to original posture. Now go to a posture laying down on your back once more. And enjoy the peace of Egypt. Important aspects of the mummy posture, your legs two feet apart, hands one foot away from the sides of the body, palms facing upwards. Allow the abdomen to expand as you breathe in, contracting towards the spine normally as you breathe out. Now we will practice the solar stand posture and the geb plow posture. Bringing the legs together, raising the legs up 45 degree angle above the head, supporting with your lower back. And then lowering the feet down to touch the toes behind your head. Keeping the knees straight. And then release, coming out one vertebra at a time. Now for the counter posture, we will do the wheel pose. Place your 
hands at shoulder level, fingers pointing towards the feet. Bring your heels into your buttocks and pushing up and arching the back. Coming down, release. Now grabbing the thighs, we practice a fish posture. The fish are the pilots of the boat of Ra. Coming up on your elbows, then arching your back, allowing your head to fall down, with the crown of the head on the ground. Raise the head up, chin to chest, and lower your upper body down, and relax. Now stretching the entire body, come up to a sitting posture. You're going to practice the forward bend, trying to keep your knees straight. Uh, touch your hands to your ankles or your toes or the floor in front of your feet if you can. Breathe out and come down. Coming up. One more time, come down. And relax. Now your hands behind your body, fingers pointing away from the body, with your back straight. You're going to push up, touching the balls of the feet to the ground in front of you, raising up the hips, allowing the head to fall back. Coming down, breathe out, and relax. Now leaving your right arm back behind you. Bend the right knee, left arm up and over your right knee to so get a spinal twist, keeping your back straight. Look back behind you and twist. Switching sides. Very good. Now release and relax. The spinal twist concludes the earth series postures of the Thevnetru system. Now coming to a posture laying on your belly. Now we move, move into a transition series of poses. We have explored the earth and now we will explore the transition to our heavenly aspect. First posture in the series is the Selket posture. Selket is the scorpion goddess who assisted the goddess Aset in her time of need in the sun resurrection myth. Turn your arms. You need to raise up your legs and arms and resting on your belly. Raise up and breathe in. Coming down, breathe out. Now come to a posture sitting on your heels. This is the sepik posture, the crocodile. Extending your left leg out, back behind you. 
Forehead on the ground. Change your legs. Now one motion, and once again more to your belly. This time with your hands at shoulder level, this is the cobra posture, posture of resurrection. Pushing up, breathe in. Coming down, breathe out. Pushing up, breathe in. Coming down, breathe out. Now one motion. Coming, sitting on your heels. This is the Sphinx posture, Hortomaka, Karu in the horizon. Resting on your elbows, the recumbent posture, four on the ground. Now pushing up and arching the back, the extended posture. Now coming to a standing posture. Has a 45 degree angle. This is Haru. Making fists with your hands, visualizing you're standing on a crocodile. In your hands, your fists, you have the tails of all the animals of the world. You're in control of the lower nature, the animal nature. Realize that you are invincible, that you are powerful. Feel the silence and feel the peace. And the potential power. Release. Extending the arms up. That is a nude posture. Nude is the goddess of the sky. It extends from end to end of the earth. Bending down, forehead to the knees, and walking yourself up forward. Make a mountain with your body. And if you can, come on your toes and your feet, in your hands, your fingers. Coming down, relax. Walking yourself back up. Release. Now the next posture in the heavenly series, the heavenly phase of the Thetanetra system, is the posture of the goddess Maat. Maat represents order, justice, truth, righteousness, balance. So after we have explored expansion through Newt, infinity, now we're bringing that infinity into an order, into a regularity. Legs three feet apart, extending the arms, side, visualize that you're unfurling wings. Begin by turning your body to the left, your lower body, upper body facing forwards, turn your head to the left, find the balance, come down and rest on your right heel, your back straight, arms horizontal.
Can we got breathing in. Switching sides. Can we got breathe in. Release. Take a deep breath and relax. Visualize that you're here with me in this wonderful expanse, in this great, powerful side of the earth. Extend in the arms. We'll practice the next posture, which is the goddess, Asa, goddess Isis. Asset represents motherhood, which represents love, devotion, and intuitional wisdom. Here's I say you're unfurling your wings once more. Stepping forward with your left leg, coming down and resting and sitting on your right heel. Once again, with your back straight and arms horizontal. Breathe in, come up. Step back. Now step forward with the right leg. Coming up, breathe in. And release. Check out any tension in your arms. Our next posture is the embrace posture. Another posture of the goddess has said through which she transmits life force energy, her resurrecting power. With the arms open, embrace yourself. Visualize that the goddess is resurrecting you, bringing forth a new body, a new conception in your mind. She brings forth enlightenment. Opening up, breathe in, embrace once more. Release. Now we move into the establishment phase of the natural system. Making fists, bring, crossing your arms over your chest. Visualize that you have a crook and a flail in each hand. The crook symbolizes royalty, symbolizes the good shepherd, symbolizes the leadership, symbolizes that you are a prince or a princess and you're ready to take up your position in the throne as king and queen of this earth. The flail symbolizes that you are the power over nature, the power of self-control, power over the three worlds. We're establishing ourselves after all these exercises in this higher nature of our own. Please. Next posture is the headstand. We're going to reverse all of the energies that are leading us into a worldly manner. We're going to release, we're going to reverse them downwards towards our higher energy centers. After the headstand, come to a resting posture on your forehead. This is the scara posture, the posture of creation, Kepri. The Kepri posture allows the blood to equalize after the headstand. 
also allows is for meditation so that we can create with all the benefits of the postures that we have practiced all the philosophy that we have learned so the Kepri posture we will go back to where we began which is the mummy posture posture of the spirit the death of the body and the resurrection of the mind so coming down lay down on your back once more Remember the important points, feet two to three feet apart, arms one foot away from the sides of the body, palms facing upwards. Allow yourself to relax, release any tension anywhere on the body. Allowing your abdomen to expand normally as you breathe in, contracting in towards your spine as you breathe out. Relax, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the peace and the silence. I hope you have enjoyed this short session of Theth Neturu here in beautiful Saqqara complex, Egypt, Africa. We will conclude with some evocatory chants to engender a positive feeling for your day, to engender a glorious understanding of the teachings and spiritual enlightenment. Masara said Hedu. You may repeat after me as you listen. Oh, Masara said Hedu. Oh, Masara said Hedu. Sada said Heru. O Mamu Rapta. O Mamu Rapta. O Mamu Rapta. O Mamu Rapta. Ama sue paneter, sak sumete paneter, aduanma ke di paharu. Ama sue paneter, sak sumete paneter, 
Give thyself to God, keep thyself daily for God, and let tomorrow be as today. Duara, 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 kepera. Duara, 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 kepera. Duara, 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 kepera. Duara, 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 kepera. Oh, mati makeru. Oh, mati makeru. Oh, mati makeru. Oh, mati makeru. Net net duanet sefekera senhue. 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 Duara herakuti ha emake emrene fem shue nate. Yang jerahe in sutenang Emma Neptawi Dua rakef tu bene Emma kerab te dempe Ande te shake Iti em kepera Que para que mande teru, ca que u ben que pese mut que. May your day be glorious. May you have health, vitality, and life. Get up. Thank you for joining us for this session of Jev Netaru Sima Paut, which means Egyptian Yoga, the movement of the gods and goddesses. It's based on our book, Egyptian Yoga Exercise Workout Book, which contains the entire history, the entire philosophy, and the great ancient origins of the system of posture movements physical movements which bring the body, mind, and heart into harmony with the netters, the netteru, the cosmic forces of the universe. If you'd like to know more, please contact us at the SEMA Institute, Temple of Aset, in Miami, Florida, P.O. Box 570-459, Miami, Florida, 33257, or call us at 305-378- Six two five three, and also you may reach us through our website, EgyptianYoga.com. Hotel, peace be with you.